Welcome back, I'm MTG Joe, and today we're playing a spicy list I found off Twitter. Uh, Shoutouts to Ali from Corsi. Uh, he went, he or she, uh, went to Mythic with this list. Uh, so it is a Jun Dredge list. So Dredge is an old kind of term for self milling uh, for benefit. So the core of the deck is Stitcher Supplier and Glow Spore Shaman throwing cards into your graveyard. Uh, we have cards that we can basically cast for free if they're put into our graveyard in Dark Amoeba and Creeping Chill. And then we have cards we can bring back from our graveyard in Gutter Bones and Bone Dragon uh, with their activated abilities. The rest of the deck is featuring some Priest of Forgotten Gods for grind value, sacrificing our own creatures. We have Rixmati Reveler and Merfolk Branchwalker to smooth out our draws. A couple of Plague Crafters as removal. Some Judiths, which is just a really good card when you have creatures dying. And then uh, a Gruesome Menagerie to bring some stuff back and some fine finalities. Uh, his list was playing uh, two more Gruesome Menageries, minus one Creeping Chill, and I'm guessing 23 lands. He didn't put down uh, his mana base. So I don't know if he's actually splashing any blue sources. Um, I'm putting in one Watery Grave just on the off chance that we need to cast an Arc Amoeba. It is possible, but I don't want to overcommit putting too much blue into the deck. Uh, the rest of the mana base is pretty much your Jun duels, mostly on a black focus. Um, I'm short a couple of the green-black duels. I'm just playing some Guild Gates in place. Not ideal, but it's better than nothing. So we'll give it a shot. This one should be fun. I usually love self-mill and aristocrat styles, so it's piqued my interest. So as we get started, if you haven't done so already, uh, subscribing, the little button on the right-hand corner in red, it's a free and easy way to show your support. So if you can click that, it goes a long way to helping continue to build the channel. Uh, with War of the Spark coming out in a couple weeks, we're going to be putting forth a bunch of new videos. want to test out as many of those Planeswalkers as I can. Super friends, whatever type of archetype. Uh, we'll also be playing a lot of user submitted stuff, so make sure to subscribe. So, Guildgate on one is good. We can Glow Spore, and then we have Plague Crafter. We'll keep that. I'll likely go Blood Crypt on two. So, we even hit our blue source if we try into Narcomoeba. In theory, we can deal 9 damage with a Glow Spore Shaman, which is pretty funny. Opponent leads on Incubation Druid. So we hit one Creeping Chill. We hit a Judith and a Glow Spore. Opponent's Selesnia colors so far with Incubation. Might be a Bant list. So we draw the Narc Amoeba, which isn't the best. Um, so we need to decide, let's attack in first, see how they block. If they want to trade the Elf. So here we can throw in the Flyer, or we can play a Plague Crafter. Keep them off mana, they missed a land drop, so I think I like that play better. I'm going to get rid of the Glow Spore Shaman here. Uh, the Plague Crafter's got an extra toughness. And we can technically play defense. Okay, so they're on Triple Druid. Uh, dry, kind of milling out, or drawing a lot here. Let's attack in. So Rick's Mahdi, we can... That would be in a very aggressive line. Yeah, let's do that. I don't think we need more lands than this. Ah, we drew the Creeping Chill. So we can Priest next turn. We have the Creeping Chill down as well. See what the opponent does. They can adapt one of the incubation druids now, so we need to be mindful. Q 
can't just attack in willy nilly. Probably just drop the priest next turn. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. Narcaniba, Narcamiba can fly over top. Play out the land, we have creeping chill, so we have three points of burn in hand. Priest is also an, represents another two points. So they'll adapt something here. So no attacks, just pass the turn, they'll go to adapt. So they hit the blue source, so this is Bant. Bant tokens, maybe. So they're likely playing Deputy of Detention, which we diversified our threats. So I think we've hit one Creeping Chill there. Judith would be really good off the top. Okay, so they have a Crisis. That is a very big crisis. Okay, so we draw a menagerie. Menagerie right now can get back Judith and Glowspore. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, choose a creature with converted mana cost one in your graveyard, then do the same for two and three. So, don't have a one. Uh, decline that. We don't want any more lands. We hit a creeping chill, which is awesome. So here we're going to attack with ev everything, see what they block and what they don't, and then use Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Okay, so we get two points of damage in there. Let's see if they double block there. Okay, so they only block there, which is actually pretty good for us. Uh, so we're just going to pass the turn. Just going to go to the face. And we'll end the turn. So we have effectively five points of damage. We just need to be able to cast this, so... Want to wait off on that. Actually, Judith, that's 2 4. Yeah, so if they attack with everything, then we can actually win this turn. So if they attack, we block here, sack the other ones. That's 3 damage plus the priest trigger for the 2. This deck's pretty sweet. Drawing the Narcamoebas are a little awkward, but being able to cast Creeping Chills for free is awesome. And this is like the modern dredge list plays both Narcamoeba and Creeping Chill. Um, they're just getting more consistent ways of putting cards into your graveyard with the reoccurring dredge mechanic. Opponents roping us. Okay, so they have another Krasis. does suck for us. Okay, so... Here I'm gonna play out the priest, because I wanna sack that priest. So 
So they block here. They block here. They block there. They block there. I don't think it's worth attacking. So let's just activate priest, target. The reason we're doing this is because the mana in our combat step. So we have two triggers. I still think we need to go for the face. We're not going to win the long game versus the crisis. So we have two mana here. Play out the Narc Amoeba and end the turn. So we want to do it this way because this might get them to attack incorrectly. As long as we can dodge another Hydroid Crisis, we're probably okay. Interesting that they're playing Sapperling Migration with Crisis. They're usually kind of two distinct decks. It's not a bugler deck, it's just like a bant stuff deck. And they have the other faces. Which is tough. So we'll see how they attack, if anything. They might just send in the 8 power one. So that's basically you're showing four damage this way with creatures, two that's six, nine. So I think we just send everything in this turn other than the priest, sack as need be. Okay. So, do we do this main phase to get the creeping chill value? Nah, I think we just attack. So they're gonna block Judith, block there, block one of the Narc Amoebas. And Sapperling block Rixmati. Opponent's deciding, so we'll activate. There was a play to do it main phase, they would have had to sap sack the Sapperling. We're doing this now so we get the Judith triggers before it dies. Nine seventeen twenty four. I think they just survive actually. And <laughs> they just win. So we should have probably done the sack first to get the points in with Rixmati. So if they see the line, that's seventeen. Seventeen twenty three. 26, so they have lethal if they swing for all. See if they do it. If not, just play Judas Sack, we win. I don't know what the opponent's doing. They have lethal, just attack.
It's probably a misplay. We could have had this game if we would have just sacked on main phase. Okay. So first, decline, play out Judith, go to attacks, so the opponent had lethal. short again yeah okay despite opponents for playing missing lethal a couple times four crises is, is uh, a little bit too much to overcome from an aggro deck This is a fun one. We drew our alert Narc and Mibas, but if we can get them for free, and if we don't play... Okay, so I don't like this hand because these payoffs are not where we want to be. We want them in our library. Okay, this hand's better. Uh, so here, keeping that on top, our opponent goes first, so we can play that on one, Glow Swore on two. So still to decide whether opponent's on gates or just budget. Do we want that land? I don't think we do. Ah, we'll keep it on top. Bone Dragon is actually pretty solid to get out, so the opponent is on gates. Let's see if they have a sweeper here. Okay, so they have the ram. That past turn, so we'll multi-block if they attack in. We need seven cards for the dragon. Play crafters, perfect. So play out the play crafter. Do you want to go maximum dance? I think we just get rid of gutter bones here. So right now we have a one and a two mana. Want to try to get play crafter into the graveyard as well. Opponents gained six life this game, which has been helpful for them. Three cards in X in graveyard. It's fine. They can grow spiral. And they have the gates ablaze. So 
kind of want to wait a turn to play Menagerie. I want to catch them with the Playcrafter. There's not much value in us doing that. So we'll just burn them with the Creeping Chill. Seven cards right now, but Menagerie's more use to us. Perfect. So we'll catch them now with the Menagerie. I never liked Shimmer of Possibility in these decks. Interesting. Oh, Grow Spiral. Okay, so here I'm gonna play the Stitcher Supplier first. It gives us the most looks. Perfect, so Narcomoeba for free. Play Gruesome Menagerie. One, two, three. So we're gonna sacrifice the gutter bones. And don't want any lands, so we'll decline. It's a pretty solid turn. So from no power to clearing their board and getting eight power on board. They have a gates ablaze here. Starting to get enough stuff that we can exile. Trying, that's awkward. Well, we're not in the business to block against this deck, especially with our Trey Angel. So we need five for that. So let's do. Get it back to hand, get it back to hand. And we'll cast one. Sets us up for next turn. They hit us for eight. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we got enough to get Bone Dragon. Enough like fluff. We'll bring it back this turn. Because we can do Gutter Bones, hold out, and the turn Bone Dragon. Smotty is pretty good. So they have 16 power. So we gotta hold this back to block the Colossus, otherwise we're dead. That's five mana. We'll end the turn here. Get them to attack with both. We don't auto lose to Gates of Blaze, but pretty far behind because we'll have to bone dragon defensively. So opponent goes to combat. We'll block here. Okay, and no crisis, no crisis, no crisis. No crisis, no angel. As long as we avoid those, we should be good. Opponents thinking there might be a crisis just based on the delay. We won't be able to attack through it. Or just explosion for five. 
That one was tough. Was tough. We're running back for one more. I'm sure there's some on the pilot. I always find these lists that go to Mythic. We wonder how much they're playing of them. Two of our payoff cards are in hand, we can't cast that, so I'm gonna mulligan. Cool. Keep. Uh, normally would, but because this doesn't come into play. Is this mono blue? Could be Drake's, could be mono blue. Just play this out on one. Yeah, likely mono blue. Definitely mono blue, so. If we can get a Judith down, that would help. Finality wouldn't be too bad, but interesting they didn't attack there. Klein really wanted that Judith. Opponent will attack in here. So if we could get finality off, would be good. Attack in first, see what they do. I'm happy to trade off. Let's mill some more. Narc Amiibo be good. Creeping Chill would be good. This is an older list still playing Essence Capture. Play that tapped. So menagerie could be another option. Seems silly on their parts, but the counter on the storm tamer, because you're gonna want to sack this. You want to put on the pteromander. Most of the lists have opted to get rid of essence capture and place of quench. Again, you don't upload onto this because this you sacrifice to protect. Can't really complain because we're losing badly, but and drawing nothing but mono lands isn't helping our cause. I'm just gonna concede this one. We'll play one more. We don't do anything that turn. Next turn we menagerie, but they hit us for five and five, and then they can likely adapt with. So this deck looks better in theory. I think that first game was interesting when we got rolling, but it's super inconsistent. Splier on one, let's go. Cool. That was a good start. We're gonna go root bound here because I want to play them. Let's discard Bone Dragon. Ah, one off from making him pay. If this is the discard mono black discard deck. It's actually super funny because our whole deck is based around getting stuff in the graveyard. 
Uh, drawing these is awful. Uh, Rick Smotty, Graveyard, I want lands. I want lands and Judith. It's just mono block, or uh, Rakdos burn. So I'm going to do this to, to self mill. Makes the opponent discard. So we can hopefully draw running lands. Judith's also good. Makes it a three turn clock. Black Red Theater. So we'll take three, decline, decline. They can have all the lands they want. Ah, not the worst. Guarantees us a land. So even if they wipe the board, we have lethal. Let's put the Dragon Skull on top, cast an Archimiba for free. Oh, that matchup went a lot better. Don't think they read Judith. So that game was sweet. Giving us hope. Let's try one more. Uh, da -da -da -da. Do we keep this? Rick's Marty. It's a slow hand. Let's mull again. Gonna keep this because of Branch Walker. We just need to draw a black source. Perfect. So it turns slow, but there's a lot of powerful cards there. So, uh, here. Gonna put that on top actually. Um, if this is Weenies, the finality part will be really good. Life gain is gonna be tough. So I'm gonna shock here, play out the Judith. Pass the turn. So the reason we do this is if they attack and the pride mate. We can double trade this. Forces them to play somewhat defensively. So I'm just gonna play out the priest here. Play this tapped. Or. Yeah, just play it tapped for now. Next turn, we'll force them to sack a couple things. Splendid Angel's also scary. Okay, so. We could have offered the trade, but I don't think we're winning this game by trading there. 
Menagerie is good if we get some stuff in the graveyard. I can bring back... So here we sack these two. Oh, actually that works out because that gives us five mana. So target the opponent, submit, sack, sack. So we won't get enough triggers to kill the angel. Hitting nothing but lands there is awkward. Gruesome Menagerie back all three. I should have stacked those the other way. So we can. So they'll attack, make an angel. Ah, that's the best case. So we'll finality. We'll find back the play crafter. So here. They're not going to want to trade the angel here, so it's a free attack. So target the opponent. Sack, sack. So hit the opponent, hit the opponent. So here we'll find, get back Plague Crafter, and probably the Bone Dragon. So we will sack the Plague Crafter. Play the Rixmati. There's an option to bring back Gutter Bones as well. But I like getting the more power on the board. Opponent's gaining a lot of life, but they need to actually close out the game now. So I'm not going to attack him with the priest in order to protect if anything gets exiled. Oh, that's a sweet animation. For the one time Bone Dragon gets... Con so they're getting a lot of life. It's re a turn plus Revitalize, Pride Mate. Uh, so here, we're going to do this because it lets us get back a gutter bones. I want to let us get back gutter bones. <sighs> Stupid. 
stupid, stupid, stupid. Not sure why they didn't let us get back gutter bones. Uh, let's... Let's put Memorial on top. I wouldn't mind drawing that. Would have been a lot better if we had gutter bones in hand. Bring back Bone Dragon next turn too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bait them into attacking with the War Leader and then bring in Bone Dragon. And then we can get Plague Crafter next turn if need be. So we'll see what the opponent comes with. Benelish Marshall. It's fine, we can still trade. So we'll bring that in. One. Get rid of you. Get rid of a Judas. Can't get back fine finality. Get rid of a stitcher. Land, land. Oh, it enters tapped. That was reading cards is important. So they probably still got it here. We can block three, so they got it. Uh, misplay, misplay, misplay. Anyways, that's the deck. Uh, seemed cooler in theory than in practice. Uh, shout out to uh, the guy who went mythic with it. Must be missing something, but uh, does not seem that strong in practice. Like you get those nutty draws, but most of the time it's just inconsistent. Thanks for watching and have a great one.